won't get to be an admiral, but you may be the admiral's well, secretary. Now we can be admirals. Working in the office of the commandant, that's kind of funny, right? <laughs> hey, welcome back to the latest installment of Backstories. I'm Admiral Linda Fagan, the vice commandant, and I'm here with Lieutenant Kylie Ralph, the protocol officer. Today we are going back in history and we're gonna review from the National Archives, some of the recruiting video for our SPARs who served and supported us during World War II. I'm really looking forward to seeing what the policy was and how much has changed in time. You ready, Kylie? I'm ready, ma'am. That is quite the drill movement. Pretty top notch. You get good food, plenty of it. And we and still get good food, plenty of it. Away. There are many jobs. <laughs> Roll the Each it's one huge. helps to win this war. You know, what stands out to me in that video is really how much has changed, right? Significantly. And for us as an organization and for us as a nation and a, and a community. Members of the Women's Reserve shall not be assigned on duty on board vessels of the Navy or Coast Guard or in the combat aircraft and shall be restricted to the performance of shore duty within the continental United States only. If you had a restriction like that been in place, I, don't, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be the vice commandant today. I would not have had the opportunities in career and in operational communities right. to lay the foundation to you know to have the prerequisite leadership and experience to be the vice commandant. It just keeps you in a box, you know. It's very limited yeah. as to what you could potentially do. Yeah, and it takes basically half of your population and say we're going to just undervalue you. Attitude toward women. Nothing so quickly discloses the presence or absence of breeding in a man as does his attitude towards women. Hmm. <laughs> I can't even finish the rest of this. <laughs> the true gentleman adheres to the view that women deserve a special consideration and protection. It is his constant aim to shield them from unpleasant or embarrassing situations, to assist them when confronted with danger or hardship, and on all occasions to so conduct himself as to contribute most to their pleasure and happiness. For men to make women feel protected, you know. I should. I hope I make you feel protected when you I'm do. near you. You know, thanks, ma'am. But you do, and I hope I do the same for you. I feel protected. I feel safe. Okay, but you know, we shouldn't have a, throw a gender role on it to feel no. safe or you know respected. Just respect should be given across all board. Yes, regardless, right? Regardless. And and you know the when I think about like the culture in the Coast Guard that we're you know we strive to achieve, it is it's about respect. It's about being valued. It's about providing safe space for people to come to work and be valued and heard and contribute to this incredible organization without uh, gender or race or any other of the you know sort of labels and norms that just really don't don't contribute to what we're, we're exactly. trying to do. Yeah. Exactly. I just want to say thank you to the SPARS for, for laying the foundation that it's allowed Kylie and I and all the other women to, to serve and succeed. And, and you, you know, just really set the set the tone for all that all that is to uh, come. You know, we're standing on your shoulders, and thank you.